Okay, Dan Roberts here with FOS. It's a beautiful fall morning. It's Halloween. Happy Halloween. And I got Dan Sheridan, who is the CEO of Brooks Running. Dan, thanks for being here. Hey, Dan. Nice to be here. Let's go for a run. It's perfect timing to be having this conversation. You're having a great week. Just reported your first ever year of billion dollars in revenue in the first three quarters of the year. Yeah, it's incredible. We're up 10% globally, uh, driving a lot of growth for us around the world. But first time we've hit a billion in the in nine months, and we're uh, we're forecasting about 1.4 billion this year in sales. All right, let's hit the pavement. We're gonna start jogging. To be CEO of Brooks Running, do you have to be a serious runner? <laughs> in our company, I classify people as runners and then people that run and i'm a person that runs I found running in college when i stopped playing organized sports so um but running super important to me and obviously i'm passionate about the category and the sport you've seen a lot of growth of smaller running and apparel brands uh talk to me a little bit about this kind of moment we're seeing why is this happening right now you know covid was a a, a moment for us that I think we were all getting back to activity outside. We were running, walking more than ever. And that created really sticky participation trends that, you know, continue right now. And so this category is super healthy. Um, maybe never been this healthy. Part of the rise of running apparel has been people just wearing their Lulu pants and their running sneakers yeah, yeah. as all day fashion on the weekend. So is that seen as a separate segment? We know that the majority of our product is run on every single day with the dedicated runner, but they choose our product for other activities like going to the gym, walking, uh, just being active. I've heard that the run club is replacing dating apps. I've seen a story actually somewhere about some of the bigger brands kind of blowing it with not embracing the new rise of the run club strongly enough. What we saw coming out of COVID was what, we did some surveys and runners told us this, that they choose running for health and wellness, obviously, for mental health, but they're choosing it for social. And it's the first time they've really checked that box on a survey. Now we have a whole new generation of runners. What do you think Dan Brooks's brand is? Well, our purpose is to inspire everyone to run and be active. That's why we exist. We think actually if the whole world went for a run, it'd be a better place. So um, the power of the run is why we exist. And I think people see that in how we express our brand. New York City Marathon, greatest event in my opinion, uh, in, uh, in the marathon series. Our brand exists for those individual stories and um, you know, super unique position for, uh, for us. Take a seat on the bench here and talk a little further. Great. Okay, Dan, thanks for running with me. You bet, man. Felt great. great. Great way to start the day. Yeah. By the way, happy Halloween. And as you said, it's also marathon week. Yeah. So we got the New York Marathon coming up on Sunday. A lot of great reasons for you to be in town. Yep. Um, let's talk a little more about that $1 billion number. I mean, we talked about the trends with running becoming a huge activity for people during COVID, post-COVID. There's a lot of great uh, tailwinds yeah. for you guys right now. What else was it this year? I mean, biggest, this is the f biggest first three quarters of the year for Brooks ever? Yeah, ever. So we hit a billion dollars through the first nine months. Um, and it's, it's a combination of things, right? Um, but first and foremost, it's innovation and product. And we launched uh, eight new styles into the market this year. Um, which is just key, right? Um, and so you're seeing our product resonate both with retailers and runners around the world. Um, so that's the first thing. The second is execution. Our team is executing really well. And in a competitive market, it's the extra 10, 15% on execution. And then our brand, our brand's stronger than it's ever been. Um, and this week you're gonna see it in the city here and on the on course. So, um, you know, we're, we're executing across the business and it's really fun right now. Fun. Uh, we talked about the overall momentum that just the running category has right now. What could slow that down? Is there anything uh, stopping this train in the next few years? Give me your crystal ball. Yeah, well, I'm a, I'm a glass half full kind of guy. So I look at the trends in terms of participation, which we talked about on the run. Participation is at an all time high, at least in the US. And we're seeing it surge in, in uh, some of the Asian markets, China being specifically where we're seeing really good trends there. So participation seems to be strong right now in run, walk, treadmill, trail, all the key um, activities that, that someone is purchasing performance product from. The consumer seems really, really healthy. Um, we're seeing average price at retail 
maintain, if not increase uh, here in the US and around the world. Uh, and then the retail network's super, super healthy. So we've got a lot of change coming um, here in the US, obviously with the election. And so there's question marks on tariffs and how that would impact our category and the like. But I gotta tell you, the fundamentals look really good for the next couple of years and, and Brooks is excited about that and have great plans to grow. Two last questions for you. You yeah. mentioned China. Yeah. You guys really just entered the China market, what, two years ago? Two years that was ago. a new thing. Yeah. Uh, what are you seeing there? What kind of trends? Yeah. So first off, um, we're seeing great participation trends. The middle class is growing, which gives them more time to invest in health and wellness. Um, public policy over there is also um, you know, reinforcing time and spaces for people to be outside and be active. Uh, and then, you know, performance products are resonating. So we just launched the Glycerin Max, which is a, a maximal cushion shoe for us. And uh, in the first week over there on Tmall, it was the number one shoe on their site, which has never happened for Brooks. Um, so innovation also leads over there. Um, we just opened our first store in Shanghai. Um, so we're in the retail business over there and, and we're seeing really nice trends there too. So, you know, all lights are green over there uh, in terms of running and, and how our brand can compete. Wow. And you mentioned retail. It continues to be an interesting story. The idea that brick and mortar is not at all dead. There are certain yeah. categories where you really do need the physical retailers. Uh, we've seen that Nike in many ways, uh, according to analysts, kind of underestimated or underemphasized brick and mortar retailers to its own detriment, overemphasizing DTC, direct to consumer online. You got to do both, right? You have to do the online sales and you have to be in the right retailers. Talk to me a little bit about Brooks bringing the, the right stores. Yeah. You know, we uh, probably almost 15 years ago, we recognized that running is a, it's a local sport. And what happens is there's probably 10,000 communities of runners around the world that um, literally are influenced by these uh, specialty run shops. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, what we've done is we've set our entire strategy up to service every channel that a runner will shop in, will research in, and ultimately will buy in. Um, because the runner's in charge and they shop across channel, they, they're influenced across channel. And so we have a, a robust direct-to-consumer business on our, on our site and on our sites around the world. But ultimately running happens in the local community. And so our entire network of sales reps and marketing reps and our marketing activation is a local activation because that's where running's happening. Nice. Dan, great stuff. Thanks for running with FOS today. Yeah, thanks, Dan.